Physical Exercise Before, During and After a Dive by Dr. Lawrence de Kock, performed by Dr. Franz Cronier. As a potential risk factor for decompression illness, physical exercise remains subject to controversy. Not only is the optimal interval between exercise and diving uncertain, but the type and intensity of the exercise itself are also cause for concern. Former general recommendations have been based on expert opinion, some anecdotes and perceived biomechanical and biochemical processes. What's more, with decompression illness being so unpredictable, even within conservative exposures associated with recreational diving, the independent influence of exercise has been difficult to determine. Is it exacerbating or mitigating? We still don't know for sure, but some evidence has emerged that is able to guide the way. Recently, researchers have uncovered some very interesting facts regarding the relationship between exercise and diving. The research may better equip us. The research may better equip today's recreational diver to plan their interval between diving and their treadmill with greater confidence. When it comes to exercise, there are essentially two potential interest groups. Firstly, there are the fitness fanatics who want to exercise whenever and wherever they can, before, during, after and even in between dives. Their interest lies in actively lowering or at least not accidentally provoking decompression illness. Secondly, there are those divers who want to stay in shape or perhaps combine their diving vacations with other sports or physical activities. Their interest is simply to avoid increasing the risk of developing decompression illness. So with these two groups in mind, the following general recommendations have emerged from a variety of workshops, discussions, reviews and recent research that has appeared and is part of the ongoing debate. Generally speaking, physical fitness is regarded as an essential requirement for recreational divers to ensure their safety and enjoyment of the activity, as well as protect them against decompression illness. The type of exercise that is recommended is moderate aerobic exercise that doesn't involve heavy straining of muscles and joints. Rapid movement, that is high cadence, of limbs should be avoided. In terms of exercise before and after diving, generally the consensus amongst researchers is that exercise should be avoided within four to six hours before and after diving. Previously it was set on 24 hours, but that was simply impractical. What about exercise during diving? Well, here the objective is to minimize gas uptake and optimize outgassing under conditions that are least likely to precipitate bubble formation. So with this in mind, minimum exercise should be performed during the on-gassing period of a dive, which is during descent and bottom time, mild, non-strenuous exercise, which involves moving of limbs and swimming easily, should be maintained during the off-gassing period of a dive, which means during the ascent and safety stop, but it's very important to take care once back on the surface to avoid dragging oneself up ladders and to minimize excessive strain on limbs and joints by removing heavy dive gear. Rather lighten the load by passing dive gear from the water to the attendant before making the exit. And then relax as long as possible before dissembling, carrying or cleaning equipment. In terms of exercise between dives, stay warm and maintain low grade activity in between and after dives. This will facilitate ongoing gas elimination without provoking bubble formation. Sleeping directly after a dive is not recommended because it impairs limb circulation and if symptoms arise they may not be recognized immediately. So in addition to these general principles, the outcome of several studies has provided some additional refinements. Between 2001 and 2004, a series of animal studies in Norway showed that rats exercising 24 hours prior to diving had fewer venous bubbles, that is, using ultrasound detection. Although bubble grades do not correspond directly to the incidence of decompression illness, they are an accepted marker of decompression stress, 
and can serve as the basis of comparison between more or less conservative dive profiles. Exercise is of course only part of the story, but these discoveries have been important in identifying the effect of exercise on blood vessel function and also which implications are relevant to cardiovascular research. In 2004, the same Norwegian group determined that their findings in rats also apply to humans. The benefits of 40 minutes of intermittent strenuous exercise on a treadmill done 24 hours before an 18 meter, 80 minute chamber dive reduced the number of venous bubbles in the heart. And with that, the race for the optimal interval between exercise and diving was on. So, in 2005, a study on Navy divers examined the effects of 45 minutes of exercise two hours before diving. Using a slightly different combination of exercise and a 30 meter dive profile for 30 minutes, these researchers also found a significant reduction in bubble grades. So the researchers concluded that exercise as little as two hours before a dive might still be expected to reduce the number of bubbles and hopefully reduce the incidence of decompression illness. Then a group of French researchers truly pushed the limits of exercising before diving when they asked to study a group of divers to exercise one hour before diving and then observed their bubble counts upon exiting the water. Again the researchers found a significant reduction in bubble grades and numbers. In 2006 a group of divers performed 10 minutes of exercise after open ocean dives of 30 meters for 30 minutes. Doppler ultrasound commenced 20 minutes after surfacing, during cycling and immediately upon terminating exercise. Somewhat surprisingly, this study found that even post-dive physical exercise seemed to reduce bubble formation. The researchers did mention that their conclusion was obtained in very well-trained, that is, physically fit Navy divers, and that additional findings or more research would be needed before being able to extrapolate these findings to, let's call it, normal recreational divers, and we echo their precautionary notes. Although these research findings are encouraging, it will take larger scale studies on a wider diving population before recommendations can be applied as standard practice. Research subjects used in these trials were clearly not representative of the average recreational diver. The experimental conditions also demanded on-site medical support, which is not the case for most recreational dives. So when it comes to diving, fortune tends to favour the conservative rather than the bold. Having said all this, surely a dive trip is meant to be relaxing. So, by all means, maintain the rigorous exercise programme prior to the dive trip. But, until the safety of ultra-short periods between exercise and diving has been confirmed, waiting at least four hours after a dive, based on the known peak appearance of venous gas bubbles, would be a bare minimum. So, to summarize, I give you the words of Zelko Ducic from his article, Exercise, Endothelium and Diving Physiology. Based on the above mentioned findings, it seems that high intensity, pre-dive exercise and moderate exercise performed during decompression stops would appear to be a wise prescription for reducing the number of venous gas bubbles after air dives. However, before these procedures can be widely adopted as a predictable safeguard against decompression illness, we need further standardization related to the exercise duration and intensity. So, get out your running shorts, fill up your water bottles and head out into the fresh air to ensure that you are perfectly preconditioned before your next dive trip.